Hello and welcome to the Safety Net. I'm your host, Stephen Bressler. Today, we are going to discuss the impact of the COVID pandemic on children's social and emotional development, behavior and learning in the context of trauma, the effect of early adverse childhood experiences of domestic violence, neglect and abuse, anti-Asian hate, and more during the pandemic. To tell us about children's mental wellness and resilience in the midst of the pandemic, I am pleased to have with us Dr. Ed K. S. Wang. Dr. Wang is the Director of Policy and Planning, Division of Global Psychiatry at Massachusetts General Hospital and Assistant Professor of Psychology at Harvard Medical School. His current domestic and international work focuses on improving the social and emotional well being of children strengthening families and community wellness. Dr. Wang is currently the board president of the National Asian American Pacific Islander Mental Health Association. On a local level, Dr. Wang is a former chairperson of the Brookline Human Relations Youth Resources Commission. Dr. Wang is the proud grandfather of two lovely granddaughters who inspired him to write the story of Kiki the monkey and the coronavirus intruder and the feeling alphabet activity set created the national virtual teachers lounge during the pandemic and the public mental health outreach conversation of wellness under the cloud of racism and anti-Asian acts of violence. Welcome to the safety net. Let, let me just uh, tell our audience that Dr. Wang and I have known each other for many years, so I'm going to take the liberty of, of addressing him by his first name. Ed, judging by the introduction, we probably have enough material for several shows. The pandemic has taken its toll on the physical and mental health of persons of all ages. What has been the impact of the pandemic on children's wellness? Well, uh, thank you, Steve. And I, yes, I'm very comfortable for you to call me Ed rather than Dr. Ed Wang. So we, we let's simplify that uh, formality, number one. And number two is that the most important thing for my uh, bio sketch is really about my two granddaughters. Um, and the reason I mentioned them is certainly they, you know, are my angels, number one, as well as uh, they actually prompt me to do some work outside of my regular setting, uh, specifically related to the pandemic and also uh, with the community. Um, so, so I think that's important. The other thing is, I just want to say that even though my focus is on children, um, you know, wellness, the fact is that we all know that, you know, adult wellness, parents' wellness has a highly impactful on our children. So healthy par parents have healthy children. So if adults ourselves are getting anxious and uh, you know, feeling a lot of pressure because you know, of the pandemic or you know, the, the ones that I'm engaged also with the Asian American Pacific Islander community, if they are stressed as an adult, if they are worried, I pretty much can guarantee you that children will pick that up very quickly because children are sharp. That's the resilience part of it. You know, they notice things. So they too then will get anxious and fearful and so forth. So I want to highlight, even though what we're talking about today is about children, the same thing it happens to us. Guess what? At some point in time, way back, we are, you know, we were all children too as well. So with that said, to answer your question, the impact, uh, let me give you a, a, a personal story. Two months into the pandemic, this was about April, and um, and this is April last year, and uh, my mentor from New York passed away, including her husband, also passed away a few days later. From COVID? After that, I'm sorry? From COVID? From COVID, yes. And after that, I have another friend passed away in June because of COVID. Uh, and then since then, you know, indirectly, I knew of several people passed away as well. So you're looking at how COVID is not only can impact ourselves physically, so to speak, 
The fact is that it actually impacts us psychologically, emotionally. You know, I lost my mentor. I lost my mentor's husband, who I knew him also pretty well, a friend later, and so forth. So imagine that the experience that I went through, my emotions, in some sense is exactly what we need to pay attention to in terms of our children. What do they experience? I have heard in my National Virtue Teachers Lounge is that, you know, uh, a teacher passed away, you know, during COVID last year. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Now that, you know, the, the student is back knowing that, you know, uh, his teacher passed away. So the loss, the fear of COVID, the uncertainty, these are all the things that we experience. And also these are the things that children experience as well. On top of that, I think then the impact is really on the social, emotional experience. And that's how I usually define wellness. What's their social emotional experience related to the pandemic, related to the anti-Asian hate? You know, what is that experience for them? And then of course, with that, that it impacts learning, right? So let's give you some really quick statistics. Recently, I think I read in the Boston Globe, talk about MCAS, you know, with, that we know a lot about, is that 2021 spring, uh, they finally, after two years of hiatus, they have the MCAS uh, test. 16%, I mean, 16% points in math was dropped, going the other way, dropped for the third and eighth graders. Not a surprising fact. Educators know that. They know because of the pandemic, because of all the, you know, virtual learning, hybrid learning and so forth, students are, were experiencing difficulties. And same thing with uh, a 10th grader, you know, their math score dropped, dropped by seven percentage point. Uh, language art, English and language art dropped about, I believe it's around 8% for the third and eighth grader. Interesting enough for, for, for a 10th grader, high school kids, Actually, there was a slight increase of 3% point. But all in all, educators predicted, predicted that educationally, that there will be a significant drop of in terms of their you know, learning. So that's the learning aspect, social emotional ex experience, impact learning. And then of course, one of the things is that we also know that you know, intense emotions, feelings, it also can impact the way that we behave how we regulate, how we control, you know, our um, behavior. And when we kind of see that, you know, people losing a little frustration tolerance, including myself, you know, when I'm driving and say, please, you know, that wasn't like me, you know, I think, I don't think so before the pandemic. Let's talk some more about uh, the anti-Asian hate. Um, during during the, Trump, the Trump years, uh, that was that was in making the that was making the front page of the newspapers and the nightly news and cable news every, every day. Um, now that we're in the Biden administration, hopefully paradise. Uh, where are we with regard to anti-Asian hate? Is that is that still taking place? Yes, uh, my understanding is that you know that is still taking place. Uh, certainly, you know, we don't have the big news, you know, in terms of what happened in North Carolina, what happened in New York, and I think even in Massachusetts, there were a few incidents. Uh, interesting enough, sometimes when the news die down, people lose attention. And, uh, but I know that in the Asian American community is ongoingly doing a lot of work in this area. And so one of the things that I want to kind of maybe share with you, let me see whether I can pull it out, is the listening sessions that I did uh, with, you know, different communities, individuals, as well as family. Interesting enough, children included. And these are the words that I picked up uh, from them. And, and I think it speaks to the question you raised earlier, you know, uh, in terms of the impact, but it also speaks to that I always think of, you know, their resiliency, you know, among all of us that we, in, in the worst of time, that we can pull these resilient efforts together. Uh, you know, Steve, you know me very well. I'm not a politician, 
But the one thing I do really strongly believe that we need to be respectful to each other. And, and that's what we also try to teach our children to be respectful. You know, don't bully others. You know, listen from the other person perspective where they're coming from. And I hope, I hope that that will become kind of the modus operandi that, uh, of our country that we really need to do much, much more. You know, we are doing it, but I think we need to do much, much more. Let me see what I can share some of the words that describe the, the feelings of the anti-Asian hate uh, 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 issues. <clears throat> Oh, before I go there, let me, since I have on, on this slide, very quickly, you know, I'm not trying to be a professor or anything. What happened is that the pandemic really impacts, and, and this is for a whole brain child, but it is really applies to us as an adult. It is this part, the feeling brains, and then the thinking brain. I think that sometimes we all get caught up so much about the feeling brain without really thinking things through with the so-called thinking brain. These two should be very much working with each other. And this is where, you know, when we get, when let's say when I get angry, when I get frustrated, I need to ask myself questions, which is then the thinking brain. I'm gonna bring that thinking brain to me. This is what we're trying to teach, uh, uh, you know, children about, you know, the whole social emotional experience. You know, how are you feeling? And what's your thinking behind that? Or if they can uh, not articulate, you know, you work with them and say, yeah, you really feel this way because of that. So uh, with that said, I just want to kind of show it to you. Uh, and one more, oops. Okay. I'm gonna, can you see it now? I can see it. Okay, so you're sharing right now, so good. Um, I don't know, I, yep, I can blow it up a little bit bigger uh, for your uh, audience. So it called wellness under the cloud of racism and anti-Asian hate violence. These are the words that they use. Hopeless, helpless, scared, upset, angry, don't belong, say nothing, fear, and here is sad or sadness. Now, when I said that, when we talk about, you know, kind of the, 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 the stress, you know, the feelings related to that, at the same time, I'm also picking up very resilient words, feeling resilient feeling words like hopeful, resilient, kind, heard, belong. That's a big one, feeling belong, mm -hmm. proud, safe respected, you know, I mentioned about, you know, we teaching our children, you know, to be respectful and confident. So that's the flip side, you know, that's the yin and the yang, right? Um, and, and that's the positive aspect of it. And this is something that I often use to use the resilient feelings to build on, you know, and work with the so-called, you know, more negative, more distressful, distressful feelings. Now, I, it, the uh, the pictures of of the individuals here in, in your in your slide, they're primarily adults. But how, how does this impact on on young people also? Yeah, well, do they, some share, of do they share the same the same words? Yeah, some of these words are actually came from uh, children because sometimes when I interview a family or listen to a family, including children participating too. Uh, so I just want to say it's not only just from adults, you know, it is also from children as well. I just want to highlight a point, if I can make a pitch about this, it's mm -hmm. down here. Racism is a public mental health problem. Absolutely. So I just want to make a pitch of that. People really need to think it this way. And uh, sometimes, you know, we really need to work with our public health official that not only focus on the physical health, but also about mental health. Thank you for that opportunity for me to do a little mention about the mental health as a, uh, is a racism is a public mental health problem. Okay, I'm gonna come back. And so, sorry, uh, uh, Steve, um, can you ask that question again? 
Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, the the question is, how how is this impacting on on young people? Uh, young people of different ages. We're talking about grammar school children. Are they are they encountering um, the type of hate that's that we read about in the newspapers? I I have in, in front of me a, 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 an article. It was in the Boston Globe uh, about elderly uh, Asian uh, folks uh, and and their their negative experiences. What well, what about kids? I, are you hearing, for instance, uh, from parents that their kids are, are coming home from school or the playground or wherever, uh, and they've encountered this kind of of, of hatred of this uh, of this racism? You know. Both in this country in the past and in Massachusetts, also in particular, you know, a uh, number of years ago, we focus on anti-bullying yeah. at school. And the fact is that, you know, that experience because of the pandemic, uh, it has raised some, you know, uh, black clouds, you know, on Asian students. You know, they talk about, you know, people make comments about they being from China, even though they might not be from China, you know, they could be Korean. We have a lot of Korean and Japanese in our community, right. uh, as well as, you know, other, you know, ethnic groups. So, so one is purely just even, you know, lump everyone, you know, to be Chinese. And of course, I'm Chinese myself. So that's an impact, you know, in terms of there's some reports of bullying. Uh, what you actually brought forward from Boston Globe, um, I couldn't remember when. I think before the school year, this school year starts, they actually has a, they did a survey in terms of, uh, oh no, they did not do a survey, uh, not for the, the beginning of the school year. It was after uh, when there's a returning back to school last school year. And uh, what they found out is that there's a, you know, discrepancy, there's a difference. Chinese parents were holding their kids back, not go back to school for two reasons. One is because of the pandemic. Two, it is because they are so concerned about that the bullying experience of their children. They are afraid that if they go back to school, they will be bullied. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, Steve, when I mentioned earlier is that when parents are anxious, it is going to rub off, you know, on the children. You know, the other, I would say healthy parents, healthy children, anxious parents, anxious children. So that is one impact kind of from, from the family itself. And of course, as I mentioned that they, we, I have heard of some uh, reports by students about they felt being bullied or they could be both kind of a, at a um, you know, kind of a, a not, they experience it very uh, non-verbally or they experience it ver very much verbally from other students. So that's how they deal with the stress. Well, I think this is whole, another whole area is how do you manage your stress? Um, and I, I think that, you know, there's a lot of resources out there that, you know, I, I encourage, you know, everyone to utilize. Uh, sometimes it's really hard even talk about race issue within the family. And if you found that it's a difficult issue to talk about, and, in, and, and also you see the impact, right, on the, on the child in terms of, let's say, uh, some of the physical aspect of it, you know, they're losing sleep, they are fearful, they are more agitated, they lose attention and so forth in, in doing work, or even maybe, you know, their, their place is reduced, you know, they are, uh, maybe they don't sleep as well and nightmares. I think it's a time to really um, go and seek some, you know, uh, help never do it alone, you know, At, particularly for Asian families, I would say, you know, if you can go and seek help. I mean, we have wonderful resources in Brookline, you know, uh, I'd like to do a shout out, you know, for the, the Brookline Center for Community Mental Health. That's a great place, you know, to get some kind of a consultations, ideas, and, and so forth. Um, remember, the statistic is not very good in a sense of not so good because I wish the numbers lower. Let me give you a, a part of across the country in terms of uh, statistics. 
one about one out of five children between two years and eight years old, one out of five diagnosed uh, either with mental illness, behavioral problems, or um, developmental or learning disabilities. One out of five. This is pre-pandemic now. Yeah. Can you imagine for the past, almost like we're getting close to two years here, you know, um, another four months, this two years have highly impacted with them. Now, the reason why I specifically encourage Asian parents to talk about this is that we know from CDC last year, the number one reason cause of death for Asian, I believe is from 16 to 25, is suicide. The number one cause of death. I think how does, it's compare, how does that compare with the rest of the population? Significantly higher. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but when it compares to you know, how, you know, uh, racial ethnic uh, cluster, you know, they talk about the white, the, the uh, Latinos and uh, all the Hispanics and then also the African American. Unfortunately, Asian American is the highest for that age group, which really means that, you know, it's not just like the, the high school age and, and going to young adult, you know, these things have been sitting and experienced painfully by the child for a longer period of time when they're younger. So I encourage everyone to, you know, use the opportunity. It's to, if you see it, you are not alone. If you experience, you know, there are changes uh, of your child behavior, you know, talk to someone, you know. Uh, I always encourage, you know, talk to your pastor as well, you know, and I think they are all healers and helpers and so forth. The reason I want to give you the number is just to highlight that uh, in some sense, I, I kind of call it an epidemic for that age group of young Asian American, uh, you know, students and young adults as well. Um, a lot of strategies. There's a lot of strategies we can promote. You know, uh, uh, you know, the child's uh, wellness. You know, uh, I always have. You know, someday maybe we can do another one. You know, I call engage, validate, connect, facilitate, and motivate. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, each, each one you know, consists of you know different set, set of strategies. I highly respect because I am part of you know Chinese American. I grew up you know in Hong Kong. You know that very well. Yeah. So I understand the best I can about our culture, the so-called you know Chinese culture. But I think there's a way to integrate the best of both the Western or the American culture and the Chinese culture or the Asian culture for other uh, Asian groups. Uh, I think that's the beauty of, of, of that uh, because there's a lot of strength, resilience in both culture. But the fact is that we have to integrate because these children are growing up in our society, in Brookline, in Massachusetts and in the United States. Have um, have Asian uh, have residents of, of of Asian background who are, who are born here, let's say, uh, who've, who've spent uh, most of their lives here. How how do they how do they inter how do they react to all of this as compared with more recent immigrants uh, from the various Asian countries? Are there any statistics on that and any, um, any I, data? Yeah, I don't have the, the, uh, the, the, the statistics on, on the comparison, you know, in terms of immigrants versus, let's say, the second generation. Right. In American in terms of young people. Um, I have to say that not having the statistics, but I have to say that, um, you know, stress is stress. Uh, the experience of distress, whether it is feelings, whether it is thoughts, whether it's behavior, physically, 
it impacts the person, right? That's the physical uh, aspect of stress response, right? Our stress response uh, is like in a situation that is stressful, we react, you know, our adrenaline pumps up, your, our heart rate increase, and, and, and also other types of, you know, hormones, you know, gets in because we are in a way of, or in the experience of, you know, the fight, flight, or freeze mode. That's very human. We all do that. But the thing is that if this is constantly being bombarded on an ongoing basis, there's a term being used for that. It's called toxic stress. And that's where it is going to deteriorate both physically of your body as well as psychologically. As a matter of fact, there is a study called the uh, Adverse Childhood Experience. Actually, I have that slide. Maybe more, I can quickly pull it and show it to you mm -hmm. because I think that will give you a little uh, kind of illustration of what's hurting us at different times, both in terms of our community, maybe in Brookline, but beyond Brookline. We always you know, look at outside of Brookline and I think we have done a lot of work in, in, in areas of, you know, in the area of with low income group, you know, the racial ethnic diverse group that are in the urban environment and, and so forth. Let me see whether I will able to pull this up. What about the incidence of domestic violence? Uh, has that, has that um, increased as far as you know, as a result of, of, the, of what folks are experiencing, the, 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 the anti-Asian bias? You know, I, um, for, well, let me ask you, uh, answering maybe broadly in your general question, and because I don't think I can answer for the Asian American Pacific Islander uh, community because I, I haven't heard the data. Uh, my work with, particularly with children that uh, are under, you know, the uh, uh, Department of uh, Children's and Family, DCF, what I have heard though, is that the number of children that need to you know, be taken out from you know, their bio parents, their birth parents have increased uh, during the time of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a kind of a hearsay from people that work in, the, in that arena because I consult in the issues of trauma you know, for these children and so forth. That's what I heard. So can I correlate that or have a saying that there's a relationship between the pandemic and let's say the increase of family violence, domestic violence, you know, my guess, you know, Steve, you're much more of an expert than I am in the domestic violence. My guess there's an increase. That's my guess. Mm -hmm. Because children experience that, you know, they witness what's happening in the families. So it, my guess we're, is we're um, getting close to, uh, to the end of the program. I, I wanted to give you a chance to talk about, about um, your book. Um, the Kiki and and um, okay, Kiki, um, I, uh, the monkey and the coronavirus intruder. Tell us, tell us about that. How did how did how did that come into being? Well, uh, let, let me just quickly say this. Uh, if you're interested about Kiki the monkey, it was written uh, about a month and a half into the pandemic last year, and it was just about the, the experience of Kiki the monkey. You know, the young monkey in terms of you know, struggling with, you know, virtual learning, struggling with the fear of the COVID and so forth uh, and, and so forth. It is written by myself as well as my uh, lovely wife, uh, Dr. McLean, who is also a, uh, a wonderful, you know, a child psychologist. So we both uh, impulsively, <laughs> we wrote that. If anyone interested, go on YouTube, just search for Kiki the Monkey. It has English version narrated, narrated and not narrated. Uh, the reason I decide not to narrate it because I want parents to spend time to read, you know, to, to the children and not like the children are fantastic in terms of they can actually go on YouTube and they can figure it out. That's not what I want. I want parents to read it to them. So it is also in Chinese uh, as well as in Spanish. So that's the Kiki the Monkey. The word, um, the Feeling Alphabet is a practice set in terms of how to talk, use games and activities to talk about one's feelings that ties into the pandemic, as well as racism issue. 
And uh, again, you can Google it. Uh, it's called Feeling Alphabets. If not, uh, maybe you know information can be forwarded to to Steve, and I'm certainly very welcome to send you a. a complimentary copy of that. That sounds great. Ed, we, we are out of time. I can't believe how quickly uh, this, this half hour went. Uh, uh, please, please come back, uh, be on the show again. I'm, there's so much more we can talk about. Uh, it's been great having you here and it's great seeing you. Uh, I would rather do it in the studio, but I, Zoom has to work, it has to work for us. Well, thank you, Ed, Dr. Ed Wang. Uh, and thank you, viewers, uh, for watching this uh, episode of the Safety Net. See you next time.